Move over, Adobe. Get out of here, DocuSign. We don't need you anymore with SharePoint eSignature. If we haven't met yet, my name is Terry, and this is my lab. If you ever had to deal with eSignature in a business environment, you know dealing with Adobe or DocuSign can be a pain, whether you're fighting with Adobe over which version of enterprise licensing you have slash need, or the account management nightmare that is DocuSign. We don't have to do that anymore. There is a much easier option from Microsoft called SharePoint eSignature. With SharePoint eSignature, any PDF stored in a SharePoint document library can be used to request signatures. Every signature request can be sent to up to 10 people and have 50 fillable fields. Best of all, the billing for SharePoint eSignature is based off of signature request, so you no longer have to buy Adobe yeah. Acrobat just to request signatures. If you're curious and want to try this out, currently SharePoint eSignature is free through June of 2024. If you're watching this after June of 2024, then don't worry, you can spin up an Azure subscription trial and they'll give you $200 of credit to test out, well, all their services, but in this case, specifically SharePoint eSignature. If you're thinking this sounds great, then stick around. I'll show you how to set up SharePoint eSignature from Microsoft Syntax, create a PDF in Microsoft Word, and send it to both internal and external contacts for signatures. Let's get started. As a SharePoint admin or global admin, go to the Microsoft Admin Center and then click on Setup. Scroll down until you see Use Content AI with Microsoft Syntax. Click on Setup Billing and then select your Azure subscription, resource group, and region. Then check the box saying you agree to pay your bill and click Save. Next, go to Manage Microsoft Syntax Services and scroll down to until you see Syntax eSignature. Click Turn On to Turn On. By default, this will turn on the service for all of your SharePoint sites using the modern layout. If you want to scope this to a subset of sites, select Select Sites, say that one five times fast, and then choose up to 100 SharePoint sites you would like to enable this service for. While the service is being enabled, let's go and verify our external sharing settings. To request e-signatures from external contents, you need to have Azure B2B enabled and also have your SharePoint sharing settings configured. The Azure B2B configuration is a global SharePoint setting that we need to use PowerShell for. Once we get connected, we'll check the setting to see if it's enabled or not. And it looks like I have not enabled this in my tenant yet, so we will go and do this one liner here to enable it. And next we'll go into SharePoint and I'll show you where these settings are so you can scope them for your environment. In mine, they're already set for a secure sharing that claws back access after a certain matter of time. Now we need a PDF to sign, but I don't have a PDF, so chat GPT to the rescue. Chat GPT, make a silly contract that's legally binding for me to use in a SharePoint e-signature demo, please. Certainly, coming right up. A legally binding contract to exchange silly socks. Perfect, why not? Let's go for it. To make this PDF, we're gonna copy and paste our new contract out of ChatGPT and into Word Online, then export it as a PDF. I'm just gonna move these two files here quickly into a test SharePoint site and see if the service is ready to go or not. Now we have to open the <clears throat> PDF we want to get signatures are and as a good first step we have the get signatures button and a pop-up telling us about the button. Go ahead and close the button, the pop-up and click on the button. I'm going to use my internal account here to represent an internal signature and then I'll use one of my personal email address here to represent an external content. Next, we gotta select the fields we want to have filled out. We see we have, you know, signature date and initials. So we'll just throw 
those fields on for both parties. You can see that it's color coded as we go. And type in a little message here and let's click on send. And failure. To be honest, this isn't that surprising. Uh, depending upon how long you've been doing Microsoft administration, you may know that when you are making configuration changes, there's certain replication variables you need to deal with. So for example, my rule of thumb is when I'm making a configuration change to an existing item, like updating a conditional access rule or providing access to a shared mailbox, even though Microsoft says five minutes, I always give it 20. Otherwise, if you are turning on a major service for the first time, like in this case, I haven't used Microsoft Syntex at all, um, those changes can take a day to fully turn on and be provisioned for your tenant depending upon what service it is. I'm gonna give it some time and then come back to it and see what we have. A few moments later. I originally enabled Microsoft Syntex at around 4.30 p.m. Now it's 10 p.m. My daughter and wife are asleep. Let's see if it works. Starting the process now, lining up all the variables just like before. And here we go. And here's an example of the email that you would receive requesting your signature. And it shows the current status. And this is just the process of signing a document very similar to Adobe or DocuSign. At this point, I should mention the time frames involved with all of this stuff. So when you are creating a PDF that you want to collect signatures on, when you send out that request, that request is open for 30 days for everybody to complete it. After everyone has completed it, everyone who had to sign it will get an, a follow-up email saying the final version of the document is ready to download. And then that download is also available for 30 days. You as the requester will obviously have the original non-signed PDF in SharePoint. And then right next to it, we'll have the signed copy of it with time and date in the title as well that you can freely move anywhere after everything is done. And that's it for our demo today, folks. With SharePoint eSignature, hopefully you've seen how you can say goodbye to cumbersome processes of the past and embrace the ease of Microsoft's simple yet powerful solution for eSignature. Just as a quick recap, today we walked through setting up SharePoint eSignature through Microsoft Syntax creating a new PDF in Microsoft Word, and then sending that PDF out to both internal and external contacts requesting their signatures. I have links to everything I've mentioned in this video down in the description below, along with links to sign up for Microsoft services if you don't already have a Microsoft 365 account, and links to all of our other social media handles and other ways to support TD Sheridan Lab. If you enjoyed this guide and found it useful, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to get notified when we release new tech related videos. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to leave a comment down below. We will answer you as soon as we can. Once again, my name is Terry. This is my lab. And until next time, keep building.